All right, I have returned. And uh, I think I even remember what I said three minutes ago, uh, which was we're gonna work on this program here and we're gonna do silence detection. So let's um, fold all of the things. Kind of like step back and think about what we're doing. Okay, so we have all these different helper functions. Do the job. So we have a main function. Uh, we, we get ourselves an AWS config, so we can interact with uh, AWS. And you get our config, uh, which has a bunch of stuff in it. It has uh, input, output bucket, keyframes, prefix, audio prefix, DP table, all that stuff. Uh, oh, that's where I was. We uh, grab arguments, we do some logging. Temporary file paths so we're gonna stick stuff. And then we we join these different tasks that we're gonna do. Right? So we do we get the metadata, we get the keyframes, we get the audio extraction. Um and then so keyframes results, audio results, audio result being a path to where like if we look that save results to DynamoDB. Oh no, it's a key, I think. Yeah, we just call it your result, but it's it's the it's what we store in Dynamo, right? It's just the key in S3. Yeah, we just directly dump it. Okay. Just thinking about like how we would have to adapt this. If we're going to have something where we're gonna take the audio that we produce and we're gonna do silence detection on it, where do we inject that work? Right? We need to Potentially we, well, maybe not. Maybe maybe we don't need to um, make a more complex like graph of activity, right? So right now we have we're doing we're doing three things in parallel, and then when all three things are done, we join them together, and then we do one last thing, which is to push the all of the collect data, the metadata about what we've done and where the results are into DynamoDB. So what if we added a fourth thing in parallel where that fourth thing is also getting, uh, it's, it's looking at the audio from the video file as well because we have a video file, but it's specifically only looking at the audio track and looking for silence, it's doing silence detection. I think we can do that without having to first extract the audio like as a separate step. I have to look at what we're doing today for silence detection. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're just calling FFmpeg. Uh, so we'll have to look at that and see how that works. Here's a question. Uh, when we're doing audio extraction, this task, uh, how do we know which track? Oh, I see. We, we just have hard coded track one here. Let's change that track number. Now I don't have unit test or anything, which means I'm not going to break the test by doing this, but also means I should be careful. Uh, which argument was it? Second argument. Cool. And then for now, um, let's do this. Let's say config dot uh, speech track number. That'll be in config. Add that. Uh, how do we add a default? There's a way of doing that. How do we do that? I think it's like we implement something. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 
problem with doing that is that um, I I wonder like if we don't have defaults here and we try to run the program does it just fail because it can't find the environment variables to provide this config it has to right but we can't for instance do this we can't provide a partial result this the other way where we do this as uh, not some what is it option yeah literally making it optional right and then here uh, one if I'm gonna do that I don't want that in multiple places so then I refactor this out again number and we define that up here okay and why am I doing this well we need to know which audio track we're interested in um, both for getting the audio out of the video file but also then to do silence detection and we're gonna do those things in parallel I think I think so in GTFFmpeg we have audio extraction, FF Pro, lib.rs, keyframes extraction. So we have something in API where we're doing the silence detection. And I think I'm gonna extract that out into my GTF of MPEG crate. Uh, somewhere, probably in silence detection, seems likely. Uh, let's see, so. Interesting structs here that may, may remove as well. Uh, we have a, a function, sex segments that takes uh, noise and duration. And there's a lot of things that are specific to you know, handling this HTTP request. Uh, and then we, we get duration. Interesting. Why do we get duration? Oh, right, right, right. This is about like how this process works um, with on the, the as an API, but it's not relevant to how we're extracting, uh, doing silence detection. So what we're doing is we're calling FFmpeg, we're giving it an input, and then we're asking for the audio track, and we're doing this filter, silence detect with noise and duration, and then we're outputting to standard out, then we uh, extract. Uh, oh, we're looking at STD error. We're checking to see if there's an error. Uh, and then checking to see if conversion failed. And then we're doing this regex. Interesting. And then what we're doing is we're iterating over the uh, matches from STD error. Why? Okay. I guess everything is going to standard error. Uh, and we're building uh, a vector of segments. And this is probably where the code that we're going to extract is going to end. So this will be fun. Uh, let's 
let's see. So. I mean, I think we could probably just start with taking this. To do. Call GT. Okay. <laughs> We just have to define that, right? So we make a new file. Silence protection. RS. Uh, and then in lib, we need to make pub mod silence detection. Checks out. Uh, pub fn detect. Like, what am I doing for keyframes extraction? I have a keyframes extraction to RS and we have an extract. So maybe I'll just call this extract. Uh, and we'll just paste what I copied. Okay, and this needs to be async. Yep, async. Uh, async bub, no. <laughs> Pub async, there you go. That's the right order of keywords. And then it's going to be unhappy about a lot of things. Uh, and we'll have to fix that. Uh, so how does keyframes extraction work? We pass in a path like that. Probably just kind of mirror this API. Uh, a track. That makes sense. Uh, noise. Duration. So this is kind of looking at, look for silences that are at least this long, or wait, no. Look for silences, or silences that define, I don't know, I'd have to, how does this work? Hold on, where, what, which of these, which of these windows is the right one? FFMJ. Silence attack. Filter socket. Okay, the filter, this filter logs a message when it detects that an input audio volume is less than or equal to a noise tolerance value for a duration greater or equal to the minimum detected noise duration. Yeah, I'm just gonna take this. <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna put a comment here. Um, yeah, and then a link. So then we go back to where we cut this code and we're going to want uh, regex and command, potentially instrument too. No, probably not. Don't need task request. Uh, I don't think we're doing anything with JSON here. We're going to want these things. Is what I'm going to do is that we're we're using this handy struct to represent segments. So I'm going to move this struct into this file. Uh, seems good. And then. And define a um, hub struct, not cursor, um, maybe extract error. Uh, I don't know that I need a status code here, so I'm going to do something like that. Because what I want to do rid of that, I'm going to, I do want the error, we're going to do tracing error. Oop. And then return, what did I call it? <laughs> Extract error. There you go. 
something like this, right? Um, and then this bit here, we're, we're going to want this code um, for our error handling over on the side. There's, there's a bunch of examples of already, but just for the sake of doing that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we do that. Um, what is the return type of this of this function? So in keyframes extraction, we return a result, right? Do something like this. And I think we wanted to do that here as well. Um, slightly differently though. We, we don't want a vec of string. We want a vec of segment. Um, these things don't exist in this crate. But guess what? They're not used by anything else. So maybe I just take this and move it over into here. Hub Monserday. Yes. Uh, it's going to be unhappy about things still because it probably has dependencies that aren't in this crate. But it's progress. So uh, that should have been something like that. Um, yeah, and of course that we can be a little bit more specific about this error here because we can just say the error type of the result is ex extract error. And I think copilot is probably there we go. So we return an error that wraps our error type. And then we that and I probably want to do some tracing actually honestly what I likely want to do is I only want to no 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 we'll, we'll trace tracing error version uh yeah that'll be good enough Then what's the problem here? Um, segments. Ah, right. We return. Well, we return OK segments. There you go. It's like, what's the cursor? Uh, I don't think we need that anymore. Right. So. The reason this is like this is because the idea would be that we would call this API and that it would keep track of like, okay, well, we're on, you know, we, we've already looked at a bunch of files and we've already moved through time of the overall video, right? And so this is trying to like, okay, well, we're, we're this is, this is the third video. So we've already looked at two videos, 20, 40 minutes has elapsed. So whatever time you, you're grabbing from here, add 40 minutes to it. And that's the actual time that the segment starts. I think that because this data is going to be stored in DynamoDB and it's going to be stored per video file, I think we're good with just um, using relative time within the video file rather than attempting to like make the time absolute with respect to the, the whole stream. Yeah. So there, there's a function. It's not happy because, well, we don't have regex as a dependency. Uh, and this is not happy because we don't have ISO 8601 as a dependency. Uh, if we go back to where we grabbed this code, Cargo Tomal. Um, and oh, great. Can I can I cop can I select this and then I 
We do that. I don't really want to do that, but it's closer. <laughs> uh, all right. So now get rid of all the stuff that I didn't want to bring. Uh, we don't actually have Chrono in here, so I'll remove that as a feature. Um, oh, but we do need Chrono. <laughs> so I'll add it back. Uh, and grab Chrono as well. Okay. So some warnings. Uh, type segment is more private. Yes. Should be obstruct segment. We have some more warnings. Uh, yeah, variables can be used directly inside of format. Uh, same here. Ah, there we go. You happy now? Nope. Uh, ducks for function. Uh, should this panic? This should this should never panic. So why would it panic? Uh, we must be calling unwrap somewhere. Right here. We're like, ah, okay. So how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Okay. So what we'll do is we'll say match. I mean, it was going to panic anyway, so we can just throw an error. Uh, we can trace what the error was. Uh, and we can do the same, same thing again, right? Like, the argument that maybe us parsing one of these values in the output shouldn't cause the whole thing to crash. I mean, it was doing that anyway. This is at least a better... Uh, it, it makes the interface more consistent. Now we're not panicking anywhere. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Docs for function returning result missing error section. Okay. So what it wants me to do is it wants me to write documentation. How dare it. Good thing I have Copilot here to, you know, Write the documentation for me. How does Clippy feel about that? Well, it's not yelling anymore, so that's good. Okay, so now uh, we gotta implement this. Uh, all right, so. Let's see, so segments is the thing we want. So we say let segments equals, it's not called that. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna match something like that. So if we get an okay, we take the segments and if there's an error, then we return our normal um, error back to Axum. And we have probably some errors because, oh yeah, segment's not defined. Yeah, we should use. That. Now that probably is gonna break other things, but also we don't need this. And Moody is still here uh, lurking. Thanks again, work and lurk. Uh, so what else is broken? Main.rs is broken. Yeah, we don't have that module anymore. Um, Structs.rs is broken because... Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Is that defining... The, mm, is this struct different? Okay, 
this segment struct also has a text. This one does not. Um, I guess what I can do is we can do PT FFmpeg. Can I, can I use, I can do that. Okay, cool. Um, I probably, honestly, at this point, I probably just want to go into API and do like cargo build. How's, how does that go? <laughs> yeah, it's unused. It's fine. Warnings are fine. Not good, but they are what they are. I've been ignoring that warning about topic IDs for like Eight months or something, I don't know. Okay, so I think yeah, we're good. So let's uh let's go up to sheets uh what's it called? Video video ingester. Do the same thing. How do you feel about this? Oh also, since I'm building this, something I can check is does this actually fail because it's missing environment variables for loading the config? Um, yeah, so one of the things I wanted to know about with the existing code that we just extracted is that it uses the raw video file, it pulls the audio itself into silence detection, it doesn't need me to pull out the audio file and then provide that to FFmpeg. It's not anticipating that's how that happens. Okay, so... Um, that's, oh, it's, uh, it's in the directory above, right? So it's in target. Uh, this is a debug build of video ingester. Okay, there we go. Failed to load config. Missing field input bucket. All right, so we didn't define define an environment variable and there's no other configuration options to like read a toml file or anything else like that for configuration. So it does immediately panic, uh, which is what I want. Run with uh, Rust backtrace one environment variable display of backtrace. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Okay. So, uh, a little bit of, I don't want to call it refactoring. There are no tests. Should there be tests? Maybe. Um, it's kind of awkward when like what we're doing is wrapping like a command line program. We could, there, there are ways that we could test that. Probably. Structure mimics the API of SDB process command. Unstand memory replaces functions that create a process with an asynchronous variant. How would you, how would a unit test something that's using this? Is a question that I probably should have an answer to at some point. Um, but yeah, there, there, there is some complexity here, but because of the fact that this is all pretty, a pretty thin layer, right? So we have, yeah, there's a database, but we have an API that's being called by a front end. It's calling a database. It's like one layer helps if my hands are in frame. If I'm going to talk with my hands, uh, <laughs> We have, we have we have one layer, right? And it's it's pretty thin, um, so I feel like there's probably more value if I was doing automated testing of doing more like integration or end-to-end -end style tests, like maybe just like having tests where we are using the UI, like deploying in environments and testing the whole thing could be really good. Um, rather than trying to, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make a mock that's gonna look for this specific set of arguments. What if I wanna reorder the arguments? That doesn't change the behavior. 
I have to then mock FFmpeg. Um, you know, at some point, this can this could be more complicated where we have multiple layers of things or we abstract out um, into an FFmpeg wrapper. Uh, this is this sort of is one, right? But more so. It's fine. Yes, things can break, but they'll be pretty easy to troubleshoot since it is kind of, you know, there's not a bunch of places that you can go. Uh, and so far, only I'm using this, you know, and before this is, you know, a product that's used by a bunch of people. And then when things break, it, it matters. But uh, yeah, it's not. Maybe we'll do more. We'll do better practices before then, hopefully. Uh, okay, so what's here? Oh yeah, so I want to make a new task where we are going to uh, do silence detection task. Um, so this is going to be something where we're going to read data and then we're going to have it returned in the same way the metadata result is like metadata results is like struct um, and it's saved results to dynamo DB will take that and store it. So we don't need like AWS config for this task. We do need the speech track number. Uh, do we need anything else? The attempt file path. That's the, the file path for let's rename this. Right, so this, if I get to rename, sometimes compile there you go, downloaded file path, video file path. That's nice. In input video file path, I think would be even better. Uh, we could go a step further and be like input video file path string, um, but we can hover over it and see it's a string anyway. So. Okay, that's a little bit clear about what's going on. And we don't have a do silence detection task uh, function yet, but we will. Real soon now. And then do. Okay, there we go. So is this the function we want? Um, it does call extract in the silence detection module of the GTF of MPEG. Great. It just manufactures some numbers. Uh, we get segments and then we trace them. We don't want to do that. We want to actually return the segments. Um, we wouldn't, yeah, I'll, I'll take this and we'll, we'll do better. So what I want to do is this type. It'd be really cool if I could just copy the type when I have over this. Yeah, I'll just do that. So we want to return a segment. It's going to yell at me. Uh, we could import or we could, I'll just import. And then, uh, well, but not that. We want to actually want to have a VEC, a VEC of segments. And we want to return segments. Um, and then we, yeah, extract error does implement debug. It probably should. Um, not that I want to actually call expect on this like this, I think. Do we want it to panic? I think maybe we do actually want it to panic. That's what we're doing. We're just calling expect. Okay. So we'll do that uh, rather than using match and pulling out the OK case. We'll just we'll just panic if it fails. Uh, oh yeah, start and enter private. That might be a that might be an issue. Uh, pub. Um, and we want to also take some arguments here for noise and duration. rather than having those 
uh, locked in here. Uh, extract path track noise duration. Path track noise duration. Looks good. Okay. So if I save that, still don't like that. Why? Uh, expected F64, found F32. Okay. Types aren't compatible. Um, duration doesn't implement display. Great. Display. You'd be able to use this. Uh, use of move value segments. Segments move due to this implicit call to into editor. Move occurs because segments has type vec of segment, which does not implement the copy trait. Uh, consider iterating over slice of the vector's contents to avoid moving into the for loop. Right. So essentially, the ownership of this vector gets moved into this for loop where we're logging its contents and we can instead borrow uh, a reference to segments here um, this should be something like more like trace here I, I don't want this to log silence detection info at um, info or even debug level. In the same way, like inside of extract, we have a, a tracing trace for the standard error from the output of calling up of MPEG. Same sort of idea. Okay. So that all seems fine. And then this is complaining because we didn't pass enough arguments. Need more configuration values. <laughs> Um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do away with this. I'm going to make me, I'm going to make it so we're just going to have to pass everything through config. Why? Because it feels very odd then to do the thing I'm about to do, which is to say, okay, well, uh, noise should be also from config. Like that. Um, and then we'll add these things because it's going to yell at me in a second. Those things don't exist. Uh, so we go back to wherever config is there is. So this is no longer an option. This is U32. Noise tolerance, silence duration. There we go. Uh, and of course this is wrong now. We have a new thing, a new result. Is our silence result. We're not doing anything with yet, so it's gonna give us a, a yellow squiggly. Uh, and now we need to fix things. So uh, two things. One, what is the value that I'm using today for noise tolerance and silence? To, well, noise and si silence is I think what the, the values are called elsewhere. Um, so if you look in here, we actually get this as like input to um, there, but we actually have environment variables. Uh, it's these values in Docker Compose. Cool. Uh, so I want to add that to our Python definition here. At least for now, I'm going to sort of hard code them. They're going to be uh, not AWS region. This is noise uh, something that I call it tolerance is that is that does that make sense noise tolerance uh, let me go read my comments again that I copied from the FFmpeg docs uh, in here okay this filter logs a message when it detects the input audio volume is less than or equal to a noise tolerance value. Well, they, they call it that. For duration greater than or equal to the minimum detected noise duration. Yeah. Uh, so again, hmm, 
Excuse me. Thing. Moist tolerance, yeah. Uh, what was the actual value? 0 0.004. Yep. And duration is 2. Nope, that, that's good. That's that's a guess. Uh, duration? <laughs> Dust tolerance. Not that kind of program. Silence duration. Is two. Okay. Sure. Um, how do I feel about these these names? Silence duration. We go back to the other file that I closed. Nope, not allowed. Uh, minimum detected noise duration. Like I could just call it that. That would be really clear. Or I could at least leave a comment for this field. Then might want to actually just say something like that. Yep. Not. Kind of expecting that the hover over would give me that text. Maybe it needs to be in line. Do I care all that much? Okay. Alrighty. Well, uh, I think. Oh, yeah. The third thing. Whoops. Also need this thing, uh, which is. Name, speech track number, speech track number, value is one, comma. is there to do? Oh, right. Right is DynamoDB. <laughs> um, so anything that I'm thinking about right now, though, is that we've already processed uh, a bunch of video files. And we have records in DynamoDB, and they're not going to have silence detection. So what do we do about that? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think we can re-trigger the jobs, rerun this job for the existing files. We just have to pass in, like we, we can directly run the batch job, um, and pass in the key of the input files and just have it redo the thing again. Um, so that can be, that can be an option. Let's pass in our. Uh, silence result to so save results to DynamoDB, and we will adapt it to handle that. So it's a vector segment, so a list of segments, and we want to. So right now we're putting an item uh, to this table, parameterized here by table name, as a key, as metadata, as audio, as keyframes. So we're going to add a new thing. Uh, I, um, silence. It could be. Uh, this doesn't look too bad. 
right? So this gets us, this, this makes a list um, on the key called silence. And we take the silence result, we map over it, transforming uh, our struct with start and end into a map with start and end as keys, where the values of those keys uh, related, corresponding to those keys are numbers. Um, mm, but that doesn't really work. Why doesn't that work? Well, what does what does start and end represent? It's a duration, um, which is currently a struct. If we call to string, what does that do? What is uh, what is to string here? Can we go to definition? Nope. Does that end up using asserting? Serialize. No, that only happens if we serialize the whole segment. duration converted to a string representing that's so 8601 duration using the chrono crate so so yeah serializing it this way gets the size so 8601 uh string value um i don't know what happens if we on the actual duration this is coming from four time duration Do we, do we have an implementation of two string? Uh, we could call as seconds instead. That that's a thing that could be done. Or not. Uh, is it in supposed to be a number? Yeah, they're sent across. Okay, great. Why? Okay, so it's a number that's going to be sent across through the API as a string, but you want to make me make it a string. Why? That'd be like if, oh, I'm gonna send a bool. You make me set, make it the string true. Uh, I I disagree with this choice. Okay. Uh, okay. So two string. Yep. Okay, so that gets us a thing that will be put into DynamoDB with a certain end. Um, yeah. Am I good with this? I think this is fine. There are other ways we could do this where this could be, instead of using a map, it could just be an array. But uh, no, I think this is fine. And we await, yeah, all of this stuff is the same. Um, so we put silence into the DynamoDB record. Okay. So what's missing now? What's wrong now? Uh, silence result is, aha, yeah. Um, so what we're supposed to do thing we're doing with these other things where we say let silence result equal silence result expect so we're just doing 
checking to see that that succeeded, that it didn't fail, and it's a uh, it spawned a job that we did in fact get a result. And uh, then otherwise, yeah. Yeah, so let's do this. Let's um, build a thing. I mean, honestly, maybe I should just make a little script that runs these four commands, but that's fine for now. So we uh, use AWS ECR get login password and pipe that into Docker login so they can log in to Elastic Container Repository, which is where I'm pushing my images. And then I do a build using our Docker file, uh, using the whole project as context because we need like the other crates that are part of it. And uh, I'm guessing there's a, a new version of the Rust <laughs> image since I'm using latest. So we're pulling that down and uh, getting things going. I didn't need service name as a parameter in this anymore. We got rid of that at the beginning of the stream. Ah, uh, what else? I think what could be interesting, um, I don't think we would necessarily have the time to do what I was alluding to earlier in the stream, where we would do kind of a full performance analysis of like different uh, settings for the batch job, but we could, we could do some quick and dirty attempts to fine tune things a bit, right? If we go into AWS batch, I think when we run, like if I clone this, this job, uh, which I'm not going to do quite yet because we need the, um, the new image, right? But what I can do is I can provide overrides. Yes, I can provide overrides here and the amount of VCPUs for each container. Each VCPU is equivalent to 1024 CPU shares. What is the CPU share in this context? Uh, AWS ECS, uh, ECPS. Okay, it talks about that there as well. So if I just search for 1024. Okay, type uh, CPU, type string, the hard limit of CPU units that present for the task. You can specify CPU unit values in the JSON file as a string, and CPU units are virtual CPUs. Um, okay, so one virtual CPU is 1024 CPU units. Uh, for tasks that run on EC2 are external instances, which is what we're going to eventually do with some things that need GPU. This field is optional. Um, supported values for tasks that run on EC2 are between 0.125 and 10. For tasks that run on Fargate, which is what we're doing right now, so we're you know pay-as-you-go CPU uh, like compute infrastructure, it's required. It must be one of the following values which determines your range of supported values for the memory parameter, right? So currently we're using 0.5 vCPU. And so memory can be one, two, three, or four gigs. Um, so what does it mean? Uh, what does a CPU unit actually represent? Are we allowed to know? Uh, you specify total CPU memory for the task. This is separate from the CPU and memory values at the container definition level. For tasks that are hosted on EC2, this is optional. Yep, specific values. Yeah, okay. So I think what we can try doing here uh, once the build is done, um, which is probably going to be after the break, 
So after the break, what we can do is we can um, just run, rerun the job that was previously run um, with the new image, because of course we're adding more work. It should be work in parallel, so it shouldn't be, it could potentially be slower depending on like memory issues, um, but we can run it, see that it works with the current kind of low settings, right? It's not as low as it can go because apparently we can go to 0.25 BCP. So we're at 0.5 with one gig of memory. So we could look at increasing amount of memory, increasing amount of CPU and seeing how that affects the time. Um, yeah, so we'll do a little bit of experimentation there. And I wonder, can we see in the jobs, like how much memory did the job actually use? So we can see this, we can see job configuration, job queue, containers. Okay, there's our, our current settings. Um, I'm, I'm going to guess that the logging is not necessarily so like with a Lambda function, you can look at the logs and you'll see like runtime and how much memory was used and startup time and those things. I don't know that we have that in, uh, in the logs from batch. We do get the logs from like running things. Um, but these are all like our logs, not from batch. So not helpful for understanding like resources consumed. Uh, maybe we can look at CloudWatch metrics after the break, but I'm going to be back in just a couple of minutes and uh, we'll continue looking at this and do some experimentation. So BRB.